guys hope everyone's doing well welcome back to another unboxing review um i know it's been a little while however we're going to take a look at another carrera car uh this time we're going back to group five we're going to check out one of my favorite cars to drive uh, in the group five category which is uh, the ford capri the zach speed capri here this is the liquid moly um livery yeah we're going to take a look at this car and uh, compared to some of the other cars I have in my collection, so let's get to it. So, as you can see, this is a digital car. It is obviously the Liquid Moly uh, livery, car number 55. Um, obviously, the Zach Speeds uh, became prevalent in German touring car racing or Group 5 racing in 1981. That's when this car kind of dominated the scene uh, before it was banned and the regulations and restrictions were became tighter but uh let's take this car off the base so to do that obviously there's just a screw at the bottom if we undo that screw we can take this car off the base here so one thing to note here is that if you want to race this car make sure you don't race it on anything uh 2 by 30 or higher or 1 by 30 uh, bank turns it just won't go All right, let's get to a little bit of history. So right here was my first ever Group 5 car I ever bought. Uh, it was in 2008. Um, I saw this Jägermeister uh, Sideways um, Ford RS Turbo from Zach Speed. And this livery obviously was so iconic, and I picked it up. Uh, this is a sideways uh, car, so I don't know if, uh, you know, sideways was very prevalent in 2008. It made a lot of competitive racing cars, and as you can see, it has a floating monopod design, and this one has an upgraded uh, 46 RPM King motor. So this is meant to fly, and it, it did. Um, as you can see, there's lots of magnets. At that time, I was very heavy into magnetic racing. I was just, yeah, it was all about speed. Uh, not so much control at that time, but this is you know the first uh, ever uh, group five um, Yeah, my first ever group five car before I bought the uh, The Kramers and the Moby Dicks and all that this was the first car I ever bought so you know many years later coming back into uh, obviously slot car racing and being now heavily involved in it uh, recently uh, when this this is the first uh, Ford Capri that I saw from Carrera, so I had to pick it up. Now, I have a bunch of other uh, liveries in my collection. Uh, and just as a little bit of information, when I find a car that I like from Carrera, I normally buy one digital version, and then every subsequent uh, livery that I find, I normally buy it in uh, the analog version of it. So that way, if I do want to switch up bodies, I can. Not too much... Uh, uh, you know, it's not too much trouble to switch up bodies. But we're looking at the Ford Capri right here from Zach Speed. Um, my favorite part of this car has to be the headlights. So this has, you know, four headlights, uh, four lights in the front here. Um, but the my favorite thing is the cross in the middle of the main headlight bulb right there. It just looks mean. It, like this, everything about this car... The aero package on this car is insane, um, and it just looks like planted, ready to go, but it can be a handful to drive, and we'll get into that later. But starting from the front, we do we have an integrated front splitter into the body, so it's really, 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 really deep front splitter uh, going straight into the body here. You can see a lot of wide fender arches here both on the front and the rear, because these are very heavily modified aero, aero cars. Uh, so from the driver's side profile, the first thing you'll notice, and the first thing that always caught my attention when I looked at these cars, were the wheels. Uh, these are really deep. Look how deep that wheel is. Uh, and really, really, really well done. So they're BBS-style wheels, deep dish, inset, I love these wheels. I think this is one of my favorite Carrera wheel of all times. Um, and, you know, I wish I could see it on more cars uh, besides the Ford 
Uh, I mean, I have it on the Ford RSs as well, uh, but, you know, this is really just a gorgeous wheel. But anyway, we are digressing. So as we flow through the driver's side of the vehicle, you'll notice there's a side exhaust port here. Uh, you'll see the liquid moly design uh, going through the vehicle here with the swirling of the greens, uh, dark green, light green, as it progresses through the body. Uh, we have a bunch of logos on the bottom here. Uh, and uh, now car number 55 is predominantly shown on the rear quarter panel there. Uh, we get to see the driver. The driver is wearing a white racing suit, red gloves, and a white, red, and black helmet. And you can see him clearly in the driver's side right there. As you sweep back to the rear of the vehicle, you can see the uh, another really cool uh, feature, which is the really short uh, rear wing, very different from the GT3 cars that we review. Uh, and then you see the integration of the spoiler to the uh, body of the vehicle. Very smooth lines once again, very crisp in movement. Looking at the top of the vehicle, we start from the front spoiler. You can see the big Carrera logo on that. As we move up to the hood, you can see the flame designs from the liquid moldy pattern. Um, you get the red and the blues. Uh, on the white livery makes for a really cool iconic car really nice to shoot in photography wise Getting speed shots with this car is really uh, awesome Now uh, we get the liquid moly uh, banner on the top of the windshield there And then as we uh, get the Zach speed logo on the roof with a Carrera big Carrera badging again on the roof again on the rear as a sweep back into the rear window uh, nothing major through the rear window, you know, simple uh, design and back into the rear spoiler. And then we get the, into the rear of the vehicle. You can see how wide this vehicle is. I uh, get the really, you know, the square headlights from the um, Ford RS there. But you can see how wide the arches are to the vehicle. Um, just like, you know, that's typical of Group 5 cars when you look at the um, the M1s, the BMW M1s, or the Kramers, you notice that really wide stance that they have, uh, a lot of aero. And that's because back in the day, like when these cars were racing, I think in the late uh, 70s, early 80s, uh, there was not a lot of um, restrictions uh, put on aero and everything else. So Zaxby really took it to the next level. So if you don't know, Zach Speed actually is a tuning, uh, is a tuner out of Germany that uh, was contracted by Ford in the late 1978 to kind of take care of their Ford um, program in Germany. And they raced on the Group 5 uh, in Germany, winning in 1981 uh, with their Group 5 car and dominating in that win. Uh, and then the car was subsequently banned in the following year as the restrictions came in and things were uh, stream more streamlined, right? So as we look at the passenger side of the vehicle, you get to see once again, it's kind of a mirror of the driver's side. Uh, no real surprise there. Uh, but what we really want to see is through the rear of the passenger rear window, you can see the fire extinguisher. Uh, I will take close-ups, and I will show you guys close-ups of this. Um, and one thing I really want to point out is look at deep air intakes here. Um, when we look at the back of the vehicle, uh, you get this really, really wide uh, rear fender arch, and then really, really big air intakes on both sides and exits on the front here as well. So great car, lots of aero, uh, standard Carrera configuration, inline motor, um, you know, uh, braids, exact, everything's pretty much standard from the career perspective. So great car, a great looking car. Um, let's see. I'm going to predict that it's not as easy to drive. You can see the overhang from the rear wheel backwards is quite a bit, but, uh, we'll see if we can, you know, match the times that the, the Kramer Porsche did. And uh, see what times we get. Okay, so take your tracks in and I'll be right back.
Hey guys, we're back from trackside, um, racing the Ford Zack Speed Capri right here, the liquid moly design. How was it? Um, quite a handful. This car is, like I said, one of my favorite cars. Um, now when it comes to GT3s, you know that I love the Porsche 911 RSR. And it's not the fastest car, but I prefer that driving style. Like when I drive my Porsche, it is, I'm pretty quick. Um, and I think any car can be adapted to your style. You have to figure out your style, find the car, and work with it. When it comes to Group 5, I love the Ford Capri Zack Speed. It's not the easiest car to drive. It is very tail heavy. Uh, the Dito Master is a lot more planted. The Kramer is a little bit more planted. But I like this car. It challenges me. It gives me, um, you know, I have to really get into the groove of running this car to get it to work for me. So it was a challenge to get 10 laps clean with this car. Um, I went off a couple of times. Uh, it was, it took about four or five attempts before I got 10 clean laps. I cleaned the tires. Um, you know, I cleaned the track of multiple times. Uh, this car has been run, so the tires were a little bit worn in. Uh, they're not upgraded. They're still the stock, stock tires on this car, uh, but they feel very hard. So almost um, looks like I will need to replace the tires. But I was able to get a time, a competitive time. So what did I get? Let's have a look. So I put it on the track. Got around the track and got a 5.246 seconds. So not too fast, uh, not compared to obviously like the poly car that we saw last week, uh, but pretty fast, fast enough uh, and rated on group five cars. It's up there, it's competitive enough. But I think what is really lacking, because like I said, this car has already been run, uh, we are lacking uh, you know, some tires on this car. So if I put Paul gauge tires or if I got some quick slicks, I think this car could definitely get more performance out of it. Um, as you can see, it's a uh, 104 grams, not very heavy, but just for comparison, we're going to look at the, uh, sideways car, which is more, uh, performance oriented. And once again, you see 87 grams, but see when I put the sideways car on my track and ran it, I only got 8.240 seconds. And you'd say to yourself, well, that has an upgrade motor, has more magnets. Why am I getting that? Well, the true, the wet where the car really suffers is in the guide pin. Um, when you look at, so you can see the guide pins, you see how long, uh, the Carrera guide pin is, uh, compared to the, uh, Jägermeister one. So, uh, one thing that was a big difference is the guide pin. So, uh, I guess if I, uh, if I was to upgrade the guide pin using maybe, uh, one from Slot Invasion and then run the car, it might give me better timings. But back to the Ford Capri Zach Speed, let's look at the leaderboard, let's see what it did. Uh, looking at the leaderboard, uh, you can see that it is on page three, uh, which is much further back than all the GT3 cars, which is to be expected. But um, when you compare it to the Porsche Kramer right here that we tested earlier, uh, you know, it's within the ballpark, it's a one, one hundredth of a second, uh, you know, behind in speed, which is nothing. Uh, if I was to probably upgrade the tires and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, true the tires properly, this car would definitely give me more, uh, speed out of it. Will it be as fast as the three car? I don't know. I've seen some people modify these Ford Capri Zach speeds incredibly, uh, well and make them really fast. Uh, I've seen them on wood track racing without magnets, uh, and they they do really well, especially at the club that I belong to now. Um, but there's a lot of people that run these Ford Capri Zach Speeds, and they do really well with them. One of my final thoughts on this vehicle. Um, well, if you like Group 5, it's a no-brainer to have this part of your collection. Uh, obviously, with the BMWs and the Porsches, there's a lot of Group 5 cars in this category. Um, and um, But, you know, it comes to styling, and I really like the styling on this car. Uh, I resonate with the styling. Uh, I love the way the car handles, uh, and I say that loosely because the car is a handful to drive. 
um, it, it does uh, tend to like oversteer a lot, uh, which is fine for me because, uh, you know, it keeps me on my toes. It, it, it makes for a pretty challenging drive, which is what I wanted. Um, I love the liveries that this vehicle comes in. It comes in a bunch of different liveries. Uh, you know, one of my favorites, obviously, uh, besides the liquid moly and the Jägermeister is this livery right here. Oh, I can see that, but yeah, this one here, right, which is, uh, the diamond pattern livery. It also comes with a nice, uh, lime yellow, uh, lime green and black livery as well. So a uh, bunch of really cool liveries for this vehicle. Um, end of the day. If you're a collector, it's great to have in your collection if you collect Group 5 cars. Um, if you are a driver, it could be a little bit of a learning curve with this car to get it uh, to handle the way you like. Or maybe you'll just be natural at it uh, and it suits your driving style. But all in all, I'm super happy to have it part of my collection. What are your thoughts on the vehicle? Let me know. Uh, the Jägermeister is still one of my favorite liveries of all time, especially in this car and this, uh, in that version. Um, what are your favorite cars? Uh, what's your favorite group five car? Let me know in the comments below. Um, and you know, uh, let me know your comments about this vehicle. If you have it, do you run it. What are your thoughts on it? So, uh, that wraps up this unboxing review, uh, coming up. Uh, I know I still owe you the second half of this collectric uh, comparison. Uh, the hold up here is uh, that I uh, I'm just working on uh, some things in the basement, so the track's not ready yet to do that comparison. Uh, but in the meantime, I did want to ask you guys as subscribers, uh, a couple of our viewers. Um, a couple of questions. Uh, I have been reviewing a lot of digital Carrera cars, but I'm now moving towards the analog space as now I'm racing more regularly at the club level. Um, I've started to develop, uh, you know, some of my analog collections. So uh, I wanted to find out from you guys uh, what you want me to review next. I have NSR cars. I have a uh, scale auto cars. Um, I have some Pioneer cars. Um, I have slotted cars, obviously I have Revo slot cars. So let me know in the comments below what kind of car you want me to see, uh, show up with next. Uh, I have a huge NSR collection as well. So, uh, let me know, uh, you know, give me some insight. Uh, it helps me choose what I do next. Um, but, uh, until next time, I hope you guys are doing well and we'll see you and have fun on rails guys. Take care.